Any of you in here would think the government is taking good decisions to solve these problems? Put your hands up. Any of you here would think nothing is being done effectively to resolve these problems? Put your hands up. Thank you. Thank you. That's my. Thank you. Okay, um, Dr. Kenty, this question goes to you. Anyway, from, from your own perspective of the world, starting from your experience in your own day and all through, do you believe we have a system in place where Anglophones or uh, English-speaking Cameroonians can be able to fit in? Now, the question is, all of us sitting here, we can even answer this question. From all the years in Cameroon, do you believe the Southern Cameroonians or the English-speaking Cameroonians have any way to fit into that system which is in Cameroon today? No. no. So, His Excellency, I know you are privileged to be where you are now as ambassador. Some of us have to struggle across waters. I started from Brazil before I came to <laughs> went to Germany before I came here. It's a long journey, but I made it because I was determined to do it. I was in Yonde one. I was studying biochemistry, but the whole stuff is how people get degrees there, I don't know how they do it. It is inexistent. I left it, and I had to start a new journey. That is what is happening to so many. So many have died on their way trying to get to greener pastures. It's just because the system you have in place, there's no chance for us to feed it. It's a puzzle. We don't even know how to put it. Mm. We don't have the opportunities. Okay, it boils down to the same problem. Please, 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 Intervene and say some things, and then we will just wrap up. There is always another opportunity. I know we are all very, very hurt with what is going on, and we want to contribute. But we have started well, and I'm sure we will work together to ensure that things go better for all of us. So, the gentleman at the door, yes, you, yes. My question goes to the acting high commissioner. I would like to know if the Cameroon government is undertaking a deal side in Cameroon. Can you continue? The question be chopped out now. So. If your question is really very important, can you speak loudly so that it can be I would like to know if the Cameroon government is undertaking a genocide at Monday in Southern Cameroon. If no, can the can His Excellency give me the definition of genocide and why has there been the cut off of in terms of the way forward, he's going to be able to play a very yes. important role. So we may sit here and ask all the questions. It boils down to the same thing. We know the problem. They all boil down to the same thing. It's how we work together to move from where we are to the next thing. And because John is here and we may want to make some commitment to assist the process of seeing him exchanging cards with him. It means that something could work. So John is going to make a um, comment. Please put comment. your hands down there. It's not a question. No, no. No. no, let John speak. There's no time. They are going to send us out. Um, what, do you, what do you see on that green screen over there? It says House Adjourned. It means that's basically the end of the parliamentary day. I, I put this room until 8 o'clock. Um, the, the people who work here need to come in and get it ready for uh, the proceedings tomorrow. So I ought to be quite, quite quick. Um, People have asked about my influence the government, but I've got to tell you, I haven't got a magic wand. When I'm in government, we lost.
lost the election. I mean, hate to say it, but we did lose the election. Um, the notion that was put forward earlier on that somehow Britain is like the parent and Cameron is a child, well, I don't think I particularly like to pursue that idea. Um, the, uh, whether the government, any government, actually will say. Mm. Yeah, two minutes, please. Whether, the, whether, whether any government actually will take that much notice of Boris Johnson, I'm not absolutely sure. We don't take a much notice of it now here, so it probably doesn't apply to other countries. However, what I would say is this. If you want to bring something to the attention of ministers, contact your own MP and say, you need to write to the minister. I'll be doing that, and we will have other meetings in the future. Julius and I will organise another meeting at some point in the next year, I don't know, month, whatever, whenever you want to have it. Um, I'll book a room, and we'll have another meeting like this. But in the meantime, look, let me be absolutely frank. It's not going to achieve anything standing up and saying to a backbench MP like me who sits on the opposition benches, who might ask questions every day and might vote against the government every day, but nevertheless doesn't have a lot of power, right, well you get the government to do something. It ain't going to work. Real change doesn't come from within here, it comes from outside. Everything that's really changed, and that includes the independence of former colonies, does not erupt in here. When Harold Miller made his winds of change speech, which led to the independence of countries like Cameroon, Cameroon and other countries in Africa and in the Caribbean. It didn't happen because he just waved the magic wand. It happened because there was pressure in Britain and then what then the colonies, that brought pressure to bear on the, on the government and on the Prime Minister. But it comes from outside Parliament. Parliament doesn't just make laws, Parliament reflects what's going on in the wider society and in the wider world. That's how the poll tax collapsed, because there was pressure from outside. It didn't happen by magic. We didn't get the national health service, we didn't get rights at work, we didn't get trade unions, we didn't get equal pay for women, we didn't get women MPs in here, because it happened because the powers that be decided it'd be a good idea. It happened because of pressure from outside. <laughs> Thank you all for coming.